So these are the two tubs that I'm planting up for this summer. And I've had several ideas for them. Now I've noticed, now that it's warmed up, that the petunias that I had in here last year, they have started to sprout, they had seeded. Um, but I want some instant color right now. So I'm gonna try to work around those seedlings as best as I can. Otherwise, I'm just not gonna worry about it. But that would be a great way if I had something else to put here to get free plants, <laughs> free, you know, containers for the summer because this petunias I use will reseed and come back. In fact, I had, I have two window boxes over there on the deck rail that I just noticed the alyssum and the petunias are coming back. So the violas in them are doing fine, most of them. And I'll just let those be the flowers until the petunias and alyssums fill in and that will be free window boxes. I don't have to spend any more money to have flowers there, which is great, especially if you're on a tight budget. Um, I am a budget-minded gardener because I know a lot of people don't have a lot of expendable funds for things that you could be considered frivolous. For me, a garden is necessary for my sanity, but I understand if you have to buy food or gas and instead of plants, then that's just the way it is. And this is a way to be able to have your flowers is a lot of times like these containers, I don't dump them out in the fall. I do clean them up a little bit, but mostly like this, these were planted last fall and they overwintered. And then during spring, they were nicer, kind of getting ratty looking. And the leaves from the tulips I had in here are getting a little yucky looking. So that's why I wanted to refresh them. And these containers sitting on this bench, which I do need to paint this bench, um, I can see from my dining room area all the time, We and even the living room. So I wanted to um, get them refreshed. So let's get going. I am gonna dig out the violas and the pansies. They're still good. The violas might be getting a little rangy, but if I trim them back, they'll be fine. Um, and I'll put them in some either some smaller pots to keep them or I will put them in the ground, probably because I'm trying to get away from a lot of containers this summer because of the drought. Containers do take more water than plants in the ground. Um, so that is the reason I probably will put them in the ground. So here it's all cleaned out and I'm just gonna put some more fresh soil in it. This is, a lot of times I use my own DIY soil, but I am out and until I get some more, if I'm gonna buy purchased soil, this is the best one that we get in this area and it's EB Stones Organics. This is called Edna's Best Potting Soil and it works fantastically. I would buy this all the time, except that I pot up so many things that um, it's more cost effective for me to make my own. I mean, we get it by the yard. If you don't have room to have it dumped off at your place, then you know, bag is the way to go because you only get a little bit at a time. But so filling in with fresh potting soil. You notice I did not dump this out. I'm just refreshing the potting soil. Um, learning from or speaking to a soil scientist, he said the soil is basically the medium that holds the plants. And even spent potting soil if it hasn't compacted. That's the downside of using uh, peat moss in potting soils is it starts to compress. And that's what creates a problem with used potting soil, as long as you have healthy plants. I have not had any disease or bugs or anything like that. So reusing it is a no brainer. And as long as I feed my plants, which I do with a, a liquid organic fertilizer um, in containers, then your old potting soil is just fine. So oh, here's a Lopelia I had bought to go in here and it got a little dried out. That's why it's looking a little sad. And I wanted to add it in with the petunias. I love a white with some bright colors. Now these are the coral colored petunias. These are not a super petunia or a wave petunia. This is a regular petunia. Um, this one is called, what is it called? Uh, perfect tunia mandarin and it gets it has about a nine inch spread now i love wave and or super tunias um, but in containers they can kind of take over the show and i want my mix to show i want there to be a balance white 
complements almost every color or brings in a calming element. So I have four of these. So I'm going to put two in each of these containers. And since this, I may turn it, keep turning it. So um, the petunias can will spread well and fill in. This is obviously a very large lobelia. Let me see. This was called hot snow white lobelia. This is a little bit taller than, this gets to a, a nine inch. It's eight to 12 inches high and a nine inch spread. So these are going to be really well filled. So, but I also sometimes like to add a foliage. Last year I had my, let me get it over here. This is called Plum Dazzled Sedum. And that works great in the pots with the other plants. But this year, I was thinking either of going with this. This is Angelina sedum, coral sedum. I was thinking of that as a nice chartreuse color. Or I was thinking of this lamium. Now, this was a container that had all kinds of flowers in it. And the lamium just took over. So I can dig up chunks of this and it will just provide a nice filler in here. Um, it has a little bit of a burgundy edging on it and has a nice pretty lavender flower um, that's very subdued. So it won't compete at all with this. So let me dig up a chunk here. And all I'm doing is putting my spade down in it. I know you can't see me, but I'm talking through it because I'm not wanting to move the camera. This is very, has grown in and filled in so much, it's come, become crowded. So dividing it is probably perfect, perfect, perfect. So there I dug out a chunk and I will divide this again and put one in the front and one in the back and this will fill in. Now let me make sure, yeah, that's gonna be pretty with that. So here's my garden knife. Maybe I'll do it up here so you can see me. And I'm just going to cut down through the roots. I'm cutting this in half so that I have two separate plants. They're taking down trees in the neighborhood. So that's why there's all the sawing and, and the other thing was the wood chipper. So I have two plants. Now this is totally free because I've had this lamium in the container forever. And I'm just going to place it in here. And it'll take a while for it to pretty up. It'll start to fill in. Probably will want to try to take over. I may even have to really whack it back. And put these in. Not too bad as far as the roots. Just tickle them a little bit, loosen them up. Not too much, they'll be fine. And dig down. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to soak these in the organic rev. I'm gonna do the one not without it and another with it. I'll soak both this one and this one. Let me go get that rev and I'll show you what I do. So I've spoken to you about the rev before and how much I am loving it. So to give my plants a soak before transplanting, it helps with, helps with getting them going is I mix a 50-50 mix of the Rev and water. There's the Rev in my dish where I'm gonna put my plants and then water. And I still got a little bit in there, so I will just mush that around and I'll put that in something to water it with. But, I am going to soak this petunia before planting it in the Rev. And then I will this Lobelia as well. And this one is definitely more root bound. And I've showed you, oh wow, that is really root bound. So I'll showed you before what I do with root bound plants. And most people just have a cow, but I just get it where I see how I've loosened them. So now the ends, instead of going round and round, they will go down. So I'm gonna let that soak for at least 20 minutes. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the plants out of that and getting them in the ground. Then we'll come back and I'll finish planting this up and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. 
So I thought I'd show you how I dug it up while I was waiting for those things to soak. I got this one cleared out. After I started chopping these leaves back, I thought, you know what? I think I planted Dutch irises in here. I maybe have just ruined that. Keep track of what you do, what you plant, um, because you will forget. And I have my new garden planner, or my garden planner that ah, I created, and it's on my website, um, if you want one, to keep me better organized, because I do some dingy things that get going and get so many things going. And I know everybody else has busy schedules too. Now, can you see what I'm doing or am I standing in the way? I'm just, I just shoved my trowel down in there amongst the growth and chopped through the roots and then came up with a big chunk. And here's some that's yucky over there. I'll just cut that back with my pruners. And like I showed you before, I'll just cut this in half. I'm reaching over, so I'm trying to stay out of your view love this garden knife. This is a Fiskars. Comes in handy. Okay, so there's the two pieces. Let me get the pruners. I like my little nippers better. Let me get the nippers. Yeah, here they are. Thank goodness. My little garden snips. And I'll snip away the stuff that's old and yucky. It'll help invigorate it, make it tidier, and all of that. So, this will go ahead and plant in here and have it all done. I already had topped this up with fresh soil over here. And snips. That one bird is sure pretty singing, isn't it? I've been trying to catch it, see what he looks like. I don't know if he's a gross beak or... We have the Western Tam... Tam... So, let me, can't remember the name of him. Okay, it starts with a T and they're really pretty orange and yellow and lots of beautiful colors like a parrot has. Okay. Got that one tidied up. One had a lot of yuckies in it. It will come back, trust me, even if I snipped it all back. All right. So get that one in there. Pull that dead leaf out. And call it good. Now this isn't all nice and tidy. I am the messiest gardener. Dumb black bug trying to get my eyeball. But it all works. It all works. And I could use more of this in other containers. And or once I get this thinned out, I can pull this all out and I can replant this galvanized bucket with something um, and have it too. But like I said, I'm trying to wean myself back on containers because of the water issue this year. Okay, so this has gotten a good soak. So I'm going to put it in here, and while I took that one out, I'm going to put another one in there to soak for the next container. And I'll soak this too. Let me get this out, and then I'll soak this. Now, ideally, if you've um, thought ahead, like I didn't, um, give these like a, a good half hour to soak, and um, they could really absorb a lot of this it's a growth stimulant it helps the roots to start drawing up nutrients from the soil right away um, and growing faster and better and bigger and you reduce your use of fertilizers by quite a bit and fertilizers are so expensive anymore so any anything you can save is worth it so there we go we're going to put that in there and this one's gonna go right in the center between all the other plants. Get it down there deep, as deep as I can. And then fill in around. Firm it down. You want good contact with the roots and the soil. And this one looks like it could use a bit of deadheading. So 
it's really a good idea. I don't want to cut these all back now, but if I'd done it earlier, I might have trimmed them all the flowers off because that forces um, the plant to focus on putting down deeper roots rather than on, you know, producing flowers. So a lot of this is pretty well spent, so we can trim it back and within a week it should be growing again. This one was pretty well spent, so I could really cut down on it pretty vigorously. Let me cut back some of this lobelia too. And it will regenerate quite quickly. So I'm just checking. Probably should put my glasses on. Okay, that's done. Now, a lot of times I know you want instant beauty um, and that's all well and good. But like I said, the land, this uh, lobelia had let it get it too far because I am behind schedule with everything. I'm gonna show you what has been kind of getting in my way, but it's really exciting as far as getting a lot of things done out here. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and plant up that one. I'm gonna let these sit a while and then I'm gonna plant up that one and then I'll show you everything done and cleaned up. But I'm gonna take you for a peek at what's happening around here in different places, different things that I've, um, I've wanted done and I needed done and it's getting done. So I'll share that with you right now. So this is my side garden and it's kind of glary because the sun's hitting it, but you'll notice my studio is looking much fresher and that's because it's getting a new paint job. The front has been painted and the um, secret cottage uh, garden side has been painted and you'll see my new real hose there. I did a lot of research on those type hoses and um, I'm loving it. This one works great. This is the one that had the top ratings. I know it looks a little <laughs> light on the flowers. I haven't cut this one back yet or I did that one. I haven't cut these back yet but the leftover little bit of water and rev I have in here. I'm just going to pour over the plants because that will give them a boost as well. Oh, I've got a plant tag in there. And then I am going to give them a good watering. One thing I want to set up on my back deck is a drip irrigation system for all the containers I do have. That'll be better for the plants and better water saving. So let me clean off my rail. It's all gotten all dirty. And this, this bench will get a good painting. A good, what was it? A painting, it will get painted. I don't know why I can't have these catchphrases. But anyways, these, I don't, can you see these pansies over here? Maybe not, I'll just swing you over. They are just doing so gorgeous in this window box. I think I have another, let me swing you over there. I have another window box like this that I might put those purple ones in, put them in a shady spot and they may do great for next fall. And I won't have to, to buy any more pansies. Or I shouldn't say have to, it might keep me from buying any more pansies, but I'll just water these in until water runs out the bottom. Make sure they're good and moist. And then I will do this again, because some of the soil in these, the older soil was a bit dried out. So um, to get it to reabsorb moisture, I will make sure and give it another water this afternoon. And I will show you, check back, when I do my video on the back deck revamp, because right now it's a total thrashed mess, um, but when I get that done, then I will show you what these look like after they filled in a little bit. And um, even now they're still pretty. They'll perk up with the sun today, but um, they'll fill in and be pretty. So there you go, garden friends. The planting up of my summer galvanized 
bushel basket containers for this summer. Um, I try to switch it up each year and this year I am kind of going towards more coral colors than the pinkies. Um, only because that's what's caught my eye and it's always fun to switch it up. So, but I will have pink petunias too because my window boxes that are to my right, right now, they're full of violas, um, have a bunch of volunteer petunias coming up as well as alyssum. So it'll be different shades of pink petunias and alyssum. I think pink, it might be purple, I don't know. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.